Now it's all very well being told to eat healthily when you're pregnant. Um, I was sick pretty much until 26 weeks into my, my, uh, my second pregnancy. My first pregnancy I felt sick as well, but the second one was awful. I mean really, really, really sick. Um, and there is a, a condition called hyperemesis which if you are at all worried about that, you need to really need to seek help. If you are finding it impossible to keep any food down, absolutely essential that you do go and get some help because it is a real problem. It's real. It's not, you're not imagining it. It's a real problem. So do go and seek help if you really cannot stomach any food whatsoever. Um, so eating healthily is, is important. But if you're feeling rubbish, you're necess not necessarily going to go for these foods. But one of the things we can do is try to increase our repertoire of foods that we can eat. And one of the things that I did when I was really, really sick um, with my, my daughter, and I found that, I mean, literally, there are very few foods that I could actually eat. What I did was I just had to think laterally. You know, I couldn't eat anything like starches, these rices, these oats here, they all made me throw up. So I had to find a grain that I could eat. And the one grain I found that I could eat um, was buckwheat. It, it was fine for me, I could eat it. So I lived off buckwheat pancakes for, for probably about three, three months. Um, so giving you as many alternatives is what I'm trying to do here. Try to eat as healthy as you can and do have a look at our other nutrition uh, videos as well because we'll give you lots of information about how you can substitute foods as well. But for now, this is all about the nutrition. So number one, folic acid. This is probably the most important one very early on to be thinking about. You need to be having this in preconception. So if you're not pregnant yet, make sure you're having lots of Green leafy vegetables, really, really good source of folic acid. You can also get folic acid from things like these citrus fruits here and also from things such as these nuts here. Um, but it is so important. It's important for the baby's um, spinal cord development really early on in your pregnancy. It's so important that this is one where you really should take a supplement as well just to make sure that you are getting enough. And again, that's one that you really should discuss with your healthcare provider to make sure you're having the right amounts of, of folic acid. The next one, really important one, is calcium. We underestimate the importance of some of these nutrients. And this is not just for your baby, which is all to do with that bone growth and development. It's also important for you as well. So obviously our, our obvious source of calcium is milk, which we all tend to know about milk being really, really uh, important source. But it's not the only source, and I think it's important to discuss the fact that a lot of us are not having dairy now, maybe dairy intolerant, or you may be choosing not to have dairy because there are allergies and you're concerned about that for the health of your baby as well. So we need alternatives. So for example, a lot of foods are now fortified with calcium, such as this almond milk right here. Also things like orange juice can be fortified with calcium as well. But a really, really important source of calcium are these humble little sardines here. And that's not because of the sardines itself, but because of the bones, because you eat the bones and the little tiny fish as well. And those bones are a fantastic source of, of calcium. So do think about trying to eat things like this if you, if you can, really, really important. The next nutrient to think about is vitamin D. Now you can get vitamin D from things like this oily fish here, but it's a very small source. The most important source of vitamin D is from the sun. Uh, and that's something we're not getting so much of, particularly if we're using a lot of scun sunscreens even on our skin, but also if we're just generally covering ourselves up because it's very cold and you're not getting your that skin exposure. So important for you to potentially have vitamin D as a supplement. Again, that's another one that you need to speak to your healthcare provider uh, with as to whether you, you need a supplement yourself. It's something that they can actually test you for. The next nutrient I'm going to talk about is manganese. Now, manganese, again, is important for bone health, for um, growth, but also really important in that reproductive stage as well, can help with conception. So sources of manganese are things, again, like our greens, the spinach here, but also things like these carrots here are a really good source of manganese as well. You can also get manganese from um, nuts as well here, and also from these bananas as well. So those are a good source of, of manganese. Really important to get that as a source. Now the next nutrient I'm going to talk to you about is zinc. Zinc is really important for a number of different reasons. 
It's important in that preconception stage, uh, it's important for hormonal activity, it's important for your immune system, it's going to help stave off those colds. It's also really important for things like healing uh, and also for cell reproduction. So we want to make sure we've got lots of different varieties of sources of where we can find zinc. So uh, you can find zinc in things like almonds, uh, also in things like bananas, uh, in the corn here, and also things like these oats here as well. Um, it's also, you get lots of zinc in things like cooked shellfish. Um, oysters are meant to be a really good source of zinc, so um, maybe that's why we think of oysters as an aphrodisiac, because it's good for that preconception stage. So iron, I'm going to talk to you about how important iron is. If you think about the fact that your body is potentially got as much as 50% more blood flowing around your body when you're pregnant, you straight away realise that the demands on your body for iron are going to be that much greater. So it's really important that you are getting enough iron in your diet. Now obviously one of the best sources of iron is this red meat here, which is fine if you're a red meat eater, that will give you lots and lots of iron. Um, but if you're not, then you need to make sure you're getting your iron from other sources as well. Now we can get iron from things like the fish here, also from the eggs, our greens are also a really good source of iron, our whole grains such as the oats and, and the rice here, you'll get some iron in some of your whole grains, but they're not huge sources, which is why you may find that you need to take an iron supplement and your iron levels will be tested during your pregnancy, they may have been done so already, and you will be given a level, then you may be on that borderline level. And I think it's really important to mention here that you might be okay and they may say you don't need an iron supplement at that moment in time, but the demands on your body go all the way through your pregnancy and also beyond as well. And it might be in that postnatal stage that you need that iron boost. So the more you can boost your iron, then the better. So keep trying to eat as many of these healthy sources as you can, but do think about an iron supplement. Talk to your healthcare provider as to what that iron supplement should be. Also bear in mind that um, the absorption of iron is really helped with sources of vitamin C, which again is why it's really important to have things like orange juice. So if you're taking an iron supplement, drink it with some orange juice rather than just with water to help with that iron absorption. So do talk to your healthcare provider. I prefer to use liquid forms of iron because again of that absorption. Um, there are also side effects with taking an iron supplement, for example, it can make you feel a bit constipated. Another reason to eat as many of these healthy foods as you possibly can or to go for sources like the liquid iron. So again, talk to your healthcare provider, make sure you're getting enough iron. So the next group of nutrients I want to talk to you about are the antioxidants. These are so important for your immune system, for your general health, and um, boosting you in all sorts of different ways to really keep you healthy and really important when the demands on your body, particularly through pregnancy, are so great. So you need to make sure you're having lots of these antioxidants. The first one is vitamin C, which is the one we tend to think about most of all. So vitamin C obviously in your citrus fruits here. Also these kiwis are a really, really good source of vitamin C, as are these berry fruits here. They're a fantastic antioxidant. Also, you can get vitamin C in your green leafy veg as well. So another reason to eat your greens. The next antioxidant I want to talk to you about is beta carotene. If you just think of your oranges and your yellows, and that helps you to think of where you're gonna get beta carotene from. So yellow peppers here, your carrots, things like these apricots and this lovely melon over here are really good sources of beta carotene. The other essential one is E14, vitamin E14. Now you're going to get that from things like these nuts and seeds down here. So again, another reason to be eating lots of nuts and seeds. The last one is selenium. Selenium is really, really important for reproduction. Also really important for sperm health, so you need to make sure uh, that your partner is getting lots of selenium and you get that mainly from Brazil nuts, so make sure he's eating lots of Brazil nuts.